Brothers and sisters, you may be seated, all praise to the Lord. Let's give the most high hand to them, all praise to the most high God. All praise. Brothers and sisters, good to see you. Sisters looking glorious. Brothers, all praise to the most high. Shalom, brothers. Shalom, Are you brothers? All praise to the Lord, all praise. Okay, let's get started. All right. One, two, two. One, two, one, two. All praise to the most high. All praise, brothers and sisters. Today is a glorious day indeed. Remember, on, the, on this day, at this time, we were on the run from Pharaoh. Right now, we was running. At this point, we was running in from Pharaoh. Understand that. Okay, let's open up. So, today's topic, obviously, the Passover 2022. Okay, deliverance from oppression. Okay, let's open up with 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10. Let's start there. 1 Corinthians 1, verse 10. First book of Corinthians, chapter 1, verse 10. Come on. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, mm. that ye all speak the same thing. That we what? That ye all speak the same thing. That we all speak the same thing. That's what the Lord wants. The most high God wants us to speak the same thing. There must not be division among us. That's why we're gathered together today on the Passover. Go ahead. And that there be no divisions among you. Because when we don't speak the same thing, there will be divisions among us. Come on. But yet, ye be perfectly joined together. We must be perfectly joined together. What joins us perfectly is the laws of God, the blood of the Messiah. Come on. In the same mind uh -huh. and in the same judgment. We must see the same things. We must see the same way according to the scriptures. All praise to the Lord. Okay, keep reading. For it has been declared unto me. You know what? You. Jump down to verse 18. Read verse 18 for me. This book of Corinthians, chapter 1, verse 18. Come on. Is Christ divided? Is Christ divided? No, Christ is not divided. Read. Was Paul crucified for you? Come on. Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? You see what the Apostle Paul is asking? Because there was divisions in the church of Corinth. That, that, like, just like these divisions today among the 12 tribes of Israel. You understand? Because we don't speak the same thing. We don't keep God's commandments as a nation. So that's why the Lord says we must get ourselves together. Wherever we are scattered, we must come together and understand what the Bible says, precept upon precept, line upon line. And when we keep God's commandments, we all going to speak the same thing. That's what the Lord is saying right there. Now give me Zephaniah 2 verse 1 real quick. Zephaniah. Because as we gather together today on the Feast of the Passover, what the Lord, our Lord and Savior did for us when we was delivered out of the land of Egypt. Read that. Zephaniah 2 verse 1. Come on. The book of Zephaniah chapter 2 verse 1. Come on. Gather yourself together. Uh -huh. Yea, gather together, O nation of desire. We are a nation that is not desired. No nation desires us, no nation like us. The nations he despises. But the most said God, he, ro he rose up the prophets in the last days that they may be able to come and teach us God's commandments. Now, as, as we are gathering ourselves together, the Lord says, What? We must gather together before the destruction comes. We are in the last days, brothers and sisters. We must understand it. Read. Before the decree, before. Before the decree comes for that decree is what the Lord is going to do on this earth to judge the 12 tribes of Israel first and the nations. Go ahead. Before the day passes the shaft. Uh -huh. Before the fierce anger of the Lord come upon you. Come on. Before the day of the Lord's end come upon you. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, before this great day of the Lord it comes, we must get ourselves together. We're not going to gather together in politics or religion. We're going to gather together in the spirit of Christ. Give me Baruch 4, the last verse. Give me that thing real quick. Baruch 4, verse 37. I'm going to be flying through this class. We definitely going to be eating the Passover in haste, as it is written in the scriptures. Understand it. Get that thing. Read. Baruch 4, the last verse. The book of Baruch, chapter 4, verse 37. Come on. Lo, thy sons come, uh -huh. whom thou settest away. Read, because the Lord sent us away in captivity. That's where we are now. Read. They come gathered together. We come gathered together like we've seen right now. We are gathered together. Come on. From the east to the west. Uh -huh. The eastern hemisphere, the western hemisphere. Come on. By the word of the Holy One. That's how we get ourselves together, by the word of the Holy One. God's laws. Read. Rejoicing in the glory of God. Rejoicing in the glory of God. We must rejoice in this day. I don't want to see nobody with a long face. 
you understand? You must rejoice. You must be happy on this day because we was delivered from Egypt. Understand that? Now watch this. Give me the book of Judges 5 and 7. Judges chapter 5 and 7. Because what we're doing right now, we are here in the righteous acts in the land of our captivity where the, land, the Lord has sent us. Read that. Judges 5 and 7. The book of Judges chapter 5 and 7. Come on. They that, were, they that are delivered from the noise of archers. They that are delivered from the noise of archers. The ICBM missile. Because destruction is coming on this earth. Read it. In the places of drawing water. The places of drawing water is the land of our captivity. Where we are slaves. Where we are drawing water for these nations. Where it's being slain by them. Read it. There shall they rehearse the there, righteous. There in the land of our captivity. We are going to rehearse the righteous acts. Go ahead. The righteous acts of the Lord. Uh -huh. Even the righteous acts toward the inhabitants of his villages. You see that thing? So that's what we're doing right now. Rehearsing the righteous acts because what we prove in our faith. Give me James 2 24. We prove in our faith by our works. You understand? James 2 24. Read that. The book of James, chapter 2, verse 24. Come on. Ye see then how that by works a man is justified. By works a man is justified. What is the works? Rehearsing the righteous acts. As we are raising the righteous acts, that's the works that are going to justify us. Really? And not by faith only. And not by faith only. You're not going to be justified by faith only. You must have faith in the Lord, but you must keep his commandment as well. Jump down to the last verse. Read. The book of James chapter 2 verse 26. Come on. For as the body without the spirit is dead. The body without the laws of God is dead. Our people, they are spiritually dead. They are the walking dead. Come on. So faith without works is dead also. Faith without keeping of the commandments and the faith in Christ, the Lord says, is dead as well. Understand that. Now give me the book of Deuteronomy 32 verse 7. Deuteronomy 32 verse 7. We are raising the righteous acts. We are remembering who we are and we're coming back into our history. Watch this. Read that. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 7. Come on. Remember the days of old. The Lord is commanding us that we must remember the days of old. We must remember our history. We must remember where we come from, like today. Really? Consider the years of many generations. Consider the years of many generations that came before us. Really? Ask thy father. Ask your fathers, come on. And you will and you will show thee. You will, they, they, your fathers will show thee. Really? Thy elders. Uh -huh. And they will tell thee. They will tell thee what the Bible says. They will teach you. Because the Lord says he's going to send prophets in the last days. All our forefathers, they are back this day. Understand that. Give me the book of Genesis 46 verse 8. Genesis 46, verse 8. Let's read that. The book of Genesis, chapter 46, verse 8. Come on. And these are the names of the children of Israel. That's when we came into Egypt with our forefather Jacob. Read. Which came into Egypt. Mm -hmm. Jacob and his sons. Read. Reuben, Jacob's firstborn. Now, Reuben, that was the firstborn of our forefather Jacob. Jump down to verse 10. The book of Genesis, chapter 46, verse 10. Come on. And the sons of Simeon, uh -huh. Jeruel and Jamin. So Simeon, that's another forefather. Okay, Simeon. Read. And Mohan and Jakim. Come on. And Zohar and Shaul, the son of the Canaanite woman. Read. And the sons of Levi. The sons of who? And the sons of Levi. The sons of Levi, which is the so called Asians of today. Read. Gershon, uh -huh. Kohath, and Merari. Read. And the sons of Judah. The sons of Judah. Okay, that's our forefather. Come on. Er and Oden. Read. And Sheila. Mm -hmm. And Pharaoh and Sarah. Read. And Er and Oden died in the land of Canaan. Come on. And the sons of Pharaoh were Hezron and Hapu. Come on. Read. And the sons of Issachar. The sons of Issachar. These are the forefathers that came into Egypt with our forefather Jacob. Read. Tola and Tafu. Come on. Tola and Puva. Read. And Job. And Shimron, uh -huh. and the sons of Zebulon. Zebulon, go ahead. Sered and Elon and Jahalim. So the Zebulon is the so-called Mayans, the so-called Mayans during the Dark Ages. That's what they were called. Read on. These be the sons of Leah, uh -huh. which she bare to Jacob in Peden Aram. Read. With his daughter Dinah, uh -huh. all the souls of his sons, all the souls of his sons and his daughters were thirty and three. Read. And the sons of Gad, Zaphion and Ham, uh -huh. Shunai and Esbon, Read. Eri and Ar Arodi, and Aredi, Read. and the sons of Asher, the sons of Asher, come on, Jemna and Ashua, Read. 
and Isuai and Beriah uh -huh. and Sarah, their sister, Wait. and the sons of Beriah, Heber and Malkiel. Wait. These are the sons of Zilpah, mm -hmm. whom Laban gave to Leah his daughter, and these she bare to Jacob, even sixteen souls. Come on. And the sons of Rachel, Jacob's wife, Joseph and Benjamin. Joseph and Benjamin. Go ahead. And unto Joseph in the land of Egypt, who born Manasseh and Ephraim. So now these are the sons of Jacob, Joseph, when he was in Egypt. Remember, he was sold by his brethren because they did not apply love thy neighbor as thyself. They hated their brother, okay? That's what you're saying today in the black community. We hate each other. You understand? There's no such thing as a black community, by the way. We only have black individuality. That's what we've got. That's why we need to come together as a nation and keep God's commandments. Really? Which Asana, the daughter, the daughter of Potiphar, really? priest of all, be unto him. Come on. There's 24. Give us 24 for me. The book of Genesis, chapter, 20, chapter 46, verse 24. Really? The sons of Naphtali, Jazil, Jazil and Guni, uh -huh. and Jezel and Shilin. These are the sons of Bela, which Laban gave unto Rachel, his daughter. And she bare these unto Jacob. All the souls were said. Now jump down to verse 27. The book of Genesis, chapter 46, verse 27. Really? And the sons of Joseph, uh -huh. which were born him in Egypt, were two souls. All the souls of the house of Jacob, which came into Egypt, were three score and ten. They were what? Were three score and ten. Three score is a sixty plus ten. That's seventy souls that came into Egypt. We get it now? All praise to the Lord. Okay. Now, let's get Exodus, Exodus chapter 1, Exodus 1 and verse 6. You know what? Please start with this five. We're going to read that. The book of Exodus chapter 1 verse 5. Come on. And all the souls that came out of the loins of Jacob were 70 souls. Were 70 souls. Please go and 10. Come on. For Joseph was in Egypt already. Joseph was already in Egypt because he was sold by his brethren. Read on. And Joseph died. Uh -huh. And all his brethren. And all the generation. Now remember, Joseph, Joseph, he under he knew the history of the Hyksos. So this is towards the end of the 17th dynasty. You understand? Now watch this. Give me the book of give me Genesis. Give me Genesis 46, verse 29. Okay, it says Joseph died. Joseph was in each glory, but Joseph died. So before Joseph died, I want to show you some history right there. Give me that in Genesis 46, verse 29. Watch this. The book of Genesis chapter 46 verse 29. Come on. And Joseph went ready his chariot uh -huh. and went up to meet Israel his father really? to Goshen and presented himself unto him. Uh -huh. And he fell on his neck and wept on, on his neck. Because, because he had not seen his father. His father had not seen his son in a while. So he thought he died. Remember they sold him and they told him he's dead. Okay, right? A good one. And Israel said unto Joseph, Ray, Now let me die, since I've seen thy face, because thou art yet living. Come on. And Joseph said unto his brethren, uh -huh. and unto his father's house, Ray, I will go up and show Pharaoh, and say unto him, My brethren and my father's house, which were in the land of Canaan, have come unto me. Ray. And the men are shepherds, for their trade. The men are what? And the men are shepherds. And the men are shepherds. Shepherd kings. That's what they were called. Shepherd kings. So what we're reading here is Joseph understand the reason why we ended up in Goshen was because of our what our forefather Joseph did. Because those of you that are doing your history, you should understand what we're doing, what we're going on. Anybody understand what we're going on? Read that verse again. Come on. The book of Genesis chapter 46 to 32. Read. And the men were shepherds, uh -huh. for their trade have been to feed cattle. Read. And they have brought their flocks and their herds Read. and all that they have. Uh -huh. And it shall come to pass when Pharaoh shall call you and shall say, What is your occupation? What is your occupation? So, what, jo what, jo what Joseph is telling is our forefather Jacob is when Pharaoh asks you, What is your occupation? This is what you're going to tell him. Go ahead. Then he shall say, Thy servants trade hath been about cattle uh -huh. from our youth even until now. Really? Both we and also our fathers. Come on. That ye may dwell in the land of Goshen. That ye may what? 
that he may dwell in the land of Goshen. In the land of Goshen. We know. For every shepherd is an abomination unto the Egyptians. You see that? For every shepherd is an abomination unto the Egyptians. Why? Because during the time of the 17th dynasty, when Amos was ruling, Amos, not Amos the first, Amos the elder. Amos the elder was during the time of Joseph. You understand? When he was ruling in Upper Egypt, guess what? The Hyksos were ruling in Lower Egypt. So the one that actually expelled the Hyksos out of Egypt was Camos. Camos was the one that is talking about when, when he expelled. So Joseph understood that history of the Hyksos. That's why he said they must go, they must tell Pharaoh that they are what? Shepherds. Because they knew the Pharaohs, they hated the Hyksos. Because they enslaved them. You understand? They were ruling in Lower Egypt, in Nezraim. Raim is Lower Egypt, Nez is Upper Egypt. Okay? So now, give me the book of Genesis now, 47 verse 1. The book of Genesis chapter 47 verse 1. Come on. Then Joseph came and told Pharaoh, Rain. and said, uh -huh. My father and my brethren, and their flocks, Rain. and their herds, and all that they have, are come out of the land of Canaan, and behold, they are in the land of Goshen. Rain. And he took some of his brethren, even five, and presented them unto Pharaoh. Come on. And Pharaoh said unto his brethren, Rain. What is your occupation? What is your occupation? Remember, the chapter before it, he told them, Listen, this is what you want to tell Pharaoh when he asks you what is your occupation. Come on. And they said unto Pharaoh, uh -huh. Thy servants are shepherds. Thy servants are what? Thy servants are shepherds. Thy servants are shepherds. Come on. Both we and also our fathers. Rain. They said, Moreover unto Pharaoh, for to sojourn in the land are we come. Uh -huh. For thy servants have no, pa have no pasture for thy flocks. Rain. For the famine is sore in the land of Cain. Rain. Now therefore we pray thee, let thy servants dwell in the land of Goshen. Let thy what? Let thy servants dwell in the land of Goshen. Let thy servants dwell in the land of Goshen. What you want to understand is that what Joseph is doing here with our forefathers, it will play a key role during the deliverance. When there was what three days of darkness, where was we in? In Goshen. So who did that? Our forefather Jacob, our forefather Joseph. He the Lord put the spirit upon him to send our forefathers in the land of Goshen. So when Egypt was getting plagued, we were fine in the land of Goshen. You understand? So the Most High was setting things up. You understand? Hundred of years earlier, before we were gonna be slaves for four hundred years in Egypt. Okay, because the UK will forget everything that our forefather Joseph did when he helped them with the fact. Understand it? Now give me Exodus 1. Exodus chapter 1, read verse 7. The book of Exodus chapter 1, verse 7. Come on. And the children of Israel were fruitful uh -huh. and increased abundantly Rain. and multiplied and works exceeding might mm -hmm. and the land was filled with them. Now we became more. Look at us now. We outnumber all nations on earth. You understand? The same thing that happened to us in Egypt back then is happening to us today. The nations are afraid. They see us stand up. They are uncomfortable. You understand? They must be uncomfortable. That's the whole point of this. Great. Now there arose up a new king over Egypt. There arose a new king over Egypt. Come on. Which you not Joseph. He did not know or not care about what Joseph did. This king that rose up is Amos the first of the 18th dynasty. Remember. In the 17th dynasty, Amos, he's the one that was what? He's the one that was ruling. Joseph was aware of him. Camos is the one that expelled the Hyksos. You understand? So Joseph died during that time. Now the new king of Egypt is called the New Kingdom. During the time of Joseph, it was called the Little Kingdom of Egypt. Okay? Read. And he said unto his people, Go, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Go ahead. Come on, let us deal wisely with them. Says, Come on, let us deal wisely with them. Meaning what? What does it mean let's deal wisely with them? Because remember, the nations, they are afraid of us multiplying. Not only that, they are afraid of us waking up. The nations don't give a damn if you are if you are doing, doing you are destroying property, you are voting. They don't care about that. The minute you pick up this book and do what it says, as an Israelite, then it makes the nations what afraid of you. Understand it. Read the verse again. The book of Exodus, chapter 1, verse, verse, nine, verse 8. No, no, no. Verse 10. The book of Exodus, chapter 1, verse 10. Come on. Come on. 
there are still wise in the dead. Mm-hmm. Lest they multiply mm-hmm. and it come to pass that when they have fallen out any war, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us and so get them up out of the land. So you notice that the ruling empire during this time was Egypt over all nations on earth. You understand? And they wanted to make sure that we don't join with their enemies to fight against them. So guess what? In these last days, the nations have done the same thing. You understand? The nations, they work together to oppress us. Because because they work together, we cannot join with them or them join with us. Because they have to work together to destroy us. So the way they deal with they dealt with us back then, they use our own people to do it. Today, the nations are coming together, they are working together to do it. Understand that? Give me Exodus 5.14. This is one of the ways they dealt wise with, wise with us back then. Watch this. Read it. The book of Exodus, chapter 5, verse 14. Come on. And the officers of the children of Israel, okay. which Pharaoh's taskmasters had sent over them, uh-huh. were beaten Come on. and demanded. Okay. Wherefore have you not fulfilled your task in making brick, both yesterday and today, as heretofore? So you see what he said? He was using our people to oppress their own. That's what you are seeing today in the organizations. You understand? They put a black brother up or a sister, especially the sisters. They always use the sisters as managers or supervisors to what? To tell you what to do as the black man. You understand? When she gets home to her husband, she's still on Barracuda mode. Okay? She don't respect her husband. That's what they do. That's how they deal wisely with you. You understand? The nations are in your house 24 hours a day, even when you sleep. <laughs> Okay, that's the topic for another day. Read the verse again. The book of Exodus, chapter 5, verse 14. Come on. And the officers of the land of Israel, which Pharaoh's taskmasters had said over them, uh-huh. were beaten Great. and demanded, Wherefore have you not fulfilled your task in making brick both yesterday and today as heretofore? So now, what's happening is that our forefathers, God, remember, there was employment in Egypt. There were many of our forefathers that was employed, they had high positions, everything was good for them. I'm going to show you something. Give me the book of Isaiah, chapter 5, verse 23. Okay? This is during the time of Babylon. Okay? Assyria, actually. Assyria, because that's where Isaiah during the time when he walked. Okay? Isaiah, chapter 5, verse 23. Watch this. How they dealt wisely with us during this time. Read that. The book of Isaiah, chapter 5, verse 23. Come on. Which justified the wicked for war. You see that thing? Our forefathers during the time of their sins, they would justify the wicked for reward. Meaning what? They would go with their oppressor for the reward they get. That means they turn against their own people for what? For gain. That's what our people are doing today. The nations always use a strategy to use all of our own against us. Really? And take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. Meaning you see that? They don't care about those people that want to keep God's commandments. They want to lead their nation. Okay, he didn't care about them. Let's go to Rome. Give me that till now, John 11, verse 47. Because during the time of Christ, the black Messiah, this is what they did. The scribes and Pharisees, they answered to Rome. Okay, and they justified the wicked system of Rome, you understand, to go against the people that were keeping God's commandments. That's the same thing today. Okay, read. The book of John, chapter 11, verse 47. Come on. Then gathered the chief priests. And the Pharisees in council uh-huh. and said, What do we for this man do with many miracles? What do we for this man do with many miracles? Because Christ was healing, he was changing lives on the people. Go ahead. If we let him thus alone, if we let him alone, come on, all men will believe in him. Uh-huh. And the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation. You see that thing? The Romans will come and take, will take away both our place and nation. Because they were only concerned about what? Their position. The benefits that they were getting under Rome. That's what you are seeing today with the pastors, with the politicians, the celebrities, the soccer players. They don't give a damn about their people. Because they get reward. They are rewarded for that. You understand? That's why only a few good men the Lord is raising up now to wake up the people. The Moses is not going to use a multitude to do this. I hope you men understand it. The Lord is not going to use a multitude. He's going to use a, a few remnant, like we read in Zephaniah, to wake up the remnant also. Because not all Israel is going to repent. 
You understand? They are not all going to repent. So we must understand that thing. So especially you brothers, we have a lot of work to do. Okay? There's no time to play in this truth. We have work to do. We have to put on the ground. Saturday sundown. I mean, sunrise put on the ground. We shall it down the steam. From sun up to sundown, we teach. We knock off at night. Sometimes at 10 p.m. Arriving at camp at 8.30 a.m. Because there's work to do. Peace of all, peace and waking our people up. So it's not about a multitude. It's about the work that needs to be done. Understand that. Okay? So go back to Exodus. Exodus chapter 1 verse 10. I just wanted to show you how the nations deal wisely with us. They always use our own to destroy us. Exodus 1 verse 10. The book of Exodus chapter 1 verse 10. Come on. Come on. Let us deal wisely with them. Really? Lest they multiply and it come to pass that when they fall at our enemy war, uh -huh. they join also unto our enemies and fight against us. Really? And so get them up out of the land. You see what they did? This is over time now. As we started to grow and multiply in Egypt, the nations had a council on how to make sure that we are always in subjection to them. They always did that. This is over time, over a period of time. That's what they did. Go ahead. Therefore they did send over them taskmasters, taskmasters to do what? To afflict them with their burden. Now this is the 18th dynasty. Read on. And they built for Pharaoh church city. Uh -huh. Python and Ramses. Python and Ramses. So what's happening here is just during the time of Ramses the second. Ramses the second. Okay. The son of Satan the first. So when you look at the Egyptian dynasties, you can go to Wikipedia and look it up. Okay, you'll find all the history lining up. But we always used to, we must use the Bible to see who was ruling, who enslaved us the most. Rex is the second during his time. Okay, read that again, verse 7. The book of Exodus, chapter 1, verse 11. Go ahead. Therefore, they did send over the taskmasters to afflict them with their burden. Uh -huh. And they built for Pharaoh treasure cities, Python, and Rex. So now, remember, verse 9. You know, verse 8, that's the new king, which is under the new kingdom. That's Amos the first. Yet verse 11 is over a period of time. This is the 19th dynasty year. Verse 8 is the 18th dynasty. Verse 11 is the 19th dynasty. Okay? Read it again. The book of Exodus of the one verse 11. Come on. Therefore they did set over the taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens, mm -hmm. and they built for Pharaoh the city. Python and Rex. Python and Rexes. Okay, give me Exodus 12 verse 37. Python and Rexes. That's in the video of the kings. When you look at this Egyptian um, Egyptian history, you understand? Today when people go, they say, no, we want to go to Egypt. That's where they go. Python and Rexes. In the video of the kings. Okay, Exodus 12 verse 37. The book of Exodus chapter 12 verse 37. Really? And the children of Israel journeyed from Venice. They journeyed from where? Journey from Ramses. We journeyed from Ramses, go ahead. To Sukkot. Uh -huh. About 600,000 on foot that were men. You see that they jumped down to verse 41. Because during that time, Ramses was ruling when we left Egypt. During the Exodus. Come on. The book of Exodus chapter 12, verse 41. Read. And it came to pass at the end of the 430 years. Because we were there for 400 years as slaves. The 30 years, and that's when we came into Egypt with whom? Jacob, our forefather, the 30 years, the 400 years that's our state life. The 30 years is talking about the time of Queen Goshen. Right? Even the subsequent day, it came to pass that all the hosts of the Lord went out from the land of Egypt. You see that thing, the host of the Lord, that's us this day. The host, the arm, God's, God's arm. We are God's arm. Brothers, do you believe that thing? Yes, sir. Oh, please. Exodus 1, read verse 12. The book of Exodus chapter 1 verse 12. Come on. But the more they afflicted, the more they afflicted us like they are doing today with COVID-19, with diseases, you understand? Poverty, they are infiltrating our communities. I mean, look at Bogaz. Look at how bad it is. Right now, we break we, we breaking ground in Chaplin. You know the, the level of horror of day is staggering. Nine year olds wearing mini skirts. You understand? Eleven year olds holding Heinekens. That's what we see. 
over there. Some evil stuff. Mothers, they are drinking all over the place. The children are holding themselves out. That was very morning Shakti. You understand? Drugs. Our people are high over there. Prostitution. Oh my God, man. So we have a lot of work to do over there. We need to build those families up. We need to raise up men so that when we are not there breaking, breaking down and elsewhere, they can continue to do the work. You understand? So we do have a lot of work to do. So you brothers that are coming in, you must understand, you have a lot of work to do because we are going to split up. When we started, it was one, then it was two, then it's all of us. Some brothers left the war, but the mission is of God. Understand that. Read on. The more they multiplied and grew, and they were grieved because of the children of Israel. The, the nations are grieved when we multiply, but not only that, they are grieved when we keep these words. This Bible right here, that's your weapon, black man. This is your weapon right here. Go ahead. And they made their lives bitter with hard bondage. Uh -huh. Excuse me, sir. The book of Exodus, chapter 1, verse 13. Right. And the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve the river. Right. And they made their lives bitter with hard bondage in mortar and in brick and in all manner of service in the field. All their service wherein they made them serve was with brick. Right. And the king of Egypt spake to the Hebrew. This is this is right, this is not the second. Go ahead. And the king of Egypt spake to the Hebrew midwives, of which the name of the one was Shifra, and the name of the other poor. Now these were the sisters, these, these were the ones that were delivered to the babies. Okay, go ahead. And he said, When we do the, the office of the midwife to the to the Hebrew woman, and see them upon the stools. Right. If it be a son, then he shall kill. Go ahead. If it be a daughter, then she shall then she shall live. So you see verse 16 right here. The midwives will command and say, listen, if it's a boy, kill the boy. If it's a girl, you must leave them alone. That is why this is important. This right here is the continuation of the feminist movement. Because the feminist movement, where did it start? In Genesis the third chapter, with our foremother Eve. What you are seeing here is a continuation of them. The, the continuation of the feminist movement. Because it says, destroy the men and let the, the, let the women survive. Today, how to destroy the men? The, the black man image is garbage. Okay? The image of the black man is garbage. So who's supposed to clean it up? We're supposed to. Okay? We must clean that thing up. Understand that? Really? Verse 17, but the midwives feared God Come on. and did not as the king of Egypt commanded them, Come on. but saved the men children alive. But the men, they saved the men children alive because why? They understood that the men are responsible for what? For the for nation building. You destroy the men, the community is gone. That's why today our community is gone because as the men, we have not taken our rightful place as the kings of this land. But that's what you are seeing right now. The Lord is doing that thing. Go ahead. And the king of Egypt called for the midwives and said unto them, Why have you done this thing and have saved the men children alive? Come on. And the midwives said unto Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not as the Egyptian, for they are alive and are, and are delivered ere the midwives come in unto them. Therefore God dealt well with the midwives. And the people multiplied and waxed very mighty. And it came to pass, because the midwives feared God, that he made them houses. And the Pharaoh charged all his people, saying, Every son that is born, he shall cast into the river, and every daughter he shall save alive. You see that thing? That's why today abortion is so high. That's why today abortion is so high in our communities. You understand? You understand? Our sons are getting put to death. You know how many stories you see on daily, son? When our sisters, you fall pregnant because you had a one night stand, you fall pregnant, you keep the baby for nine months, and then you give birth to it, you throw it in the garbage, you throw it in the bay, you throw it in the ocean, in the river. That's what they do now. You understand? Nobody's reporting this, by the way. Only the daily, son. Primarily. But the government don't talk about it. Because the, the, the women, they say, this is my boy. I can do whatever I want with it. You understand? 
and they say the black man, the black man is no good. They hate the black man, but who's raising these kids? The black woman. Because they keep the black man out of the house. Now you've got black women raising black men and they don't raise them up to be men. So what does that mean? When these boys grow up, they are that, they, those are the same men that the black women complain about. You see the cycle? They raise black men up, but they don't raise them to be men because they are not mature. They are overgrown babies. So now those, those kids are grown now, but mentally they are still immature. And then the black woman says, no, the black man is no good. But who's raising them? You do. You are raising these kids. You see that thing? That's why it's time to raise the black man up. It's time for the black man to put his boots on. Now watch this. Give me Exodus 2, verse 23. Exodus 2, verse 23. Wait. And it came to pass in process of time, that the king of Egypt died, uh -huh. and the children of Israel sighed by reason of the bondage. Wait. And they cried, and their cry came unto God by reason of the bondage. So the king of Egypt that died is saying the first. Okay? This is the father of Ramses the second. Read. And God heard their groan, and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. Uh -huh. And uh -huh. God read on. And God looked upon the children of Israel. And God had respect unto them. Because God has respect unto us when we keep his laws. Understand that. Exodus 3, read verse 7. The book of Exodus 3, verse 7. Come on. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people, which I eat, and have heard their cry. And have heard their what? And have heard their cry. Because today the reason why you see our people are crying. Look at Operation to do this. Oh no, no, excuse me. Operation to do that. You see what they are doing in the community? They just be destroying the community. They are promoting black on black violence. You understand? So you can see that the white man is sitting behind that boy. That's obvious. When you look at it spiritually, that's how they deal wisely with us in Exodus 1 and 10. Ngandalax is an, is an example of how the nations are dealing wisely with us. Look at the end time is getting. Israel is giving him attention. You need to worry about them. Whenever you see black men being given attention by Esau, you must know something is going on and it's not for our benefit. You understand? So that's how they deal wisely with us. Okay, now, read up. By reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. Because the Lord says he knows our sorrows. The Lord is not, the Lord is seeing what we do, waking our people up. Okay, read verse 10. Come on. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel out of Egypt. You see that thing? The Lord now is commanding Moses to listen. I'm going to use you to deliver my people out of Egypt, out of slavery. You understand? Now, watch this. Give me, let's get to the plates now. Okay? I told you I'm going to be flying through this class. Okay? Let's get to the plates. Exodus chapter 7, verse 17. Okay. Exodus chapter 7 verse 17. Okay, is there is there okay? Can you hand out the, the plates out here? Because there, there, there is a print there, there's print out here of the plates. Okay, so we need to hand these out so they can see what we're talking about. Okay, Exodus chapter 7 verse 17. Read them. The book of Exodus chapter 7 verse 17. This is the first plate. The Lord called Moses to say, Listen, I want you to deliver my people out of Egypt because I've heard their cry. Watch what happens. Right? And now the Lord is going to use Moses to judge Egypt. Come on. Thus said the Lord, In this thou shalt know that I am Lord. Behold, I will smite with the rod that is, that is in my hand upon the waters, right? which are in the river, Rain. and they shall be turned to blood. Come on. And the fish that is in the river shall die, and the river shall stink, and the Egyptians shall learn to drink of the water of the river. Okay, go ahead. And the Lord spake unto Moses, Say unto Aaron, Take thy rod and stretch out thy hand upon the waters of Egypt, upon their streams, upon their rivers, and upon their ponds, Wait. and upon all their pools of water, that they may become blood, and that there may be blood throughout all the land of Egypt, both in vessels of wood and in vessels of stone. So now, the first judgment that the Lord launched upon Egypt was what? to destroy the water god, the so-called water god. 
You understand? The crocodile god, because that's what they worshipped. So back. That's why the water turned into blood. Because what? Because the Egyptians, they worshipped the crocodile, the water god. You understand? And our people, they worship that as well. Understand that? What, what, what the Egyptians were doing back then in Egypt, we were doing it as well. Like we are doing today, our people, our people are doing the same thing that we were doing when we were in Egypt, following the customs of the oppressed. Okay? Let's, let, let's go to the next plague. Give me Exodus 8 verse 5. The book of Exodus 8 verse 5. Come on. Then the Lord spake unto Moses, say unto Aaron, Stretch forth thine hand with thy rod over the streets, Wait. over the rivers, uh -huh. over the ponds, and cause frogs to come upon the land of Egypt. Mm -hmm. And Aaron stretched, forth, stretched out his hand over the waters of Egypt, and the frogs came up and covered the land of Egypt. Wait. And, then the, and the magicians did so with their tongues, and put, and put up frogs upon the land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron and said, Entreat the Lord that he may take away the frogs from me and from my people, and I will let the people go. Right? That they may do sacrifice unto the Lord. So now the Lord is, 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 is decided to smite the Egyptians with frogs. There were frogs all over. Imagine you wake up in your bed, there's frogs all over in your house. What would you do? Think about that. Sleeping on a frog. Mm, not just one, multiple. Go ahead. And Moses said unto Pharaoh, Glory over me, when shall I entreat for thee? Rain. And for thy servants, Come on. and for thy people, Rain. to destroy the frogs from thee and thy houses, that they may remain in the river only. You see what he said? That they may remain in the river only. So he's pleading right here. Now, jump down to verse 16. We're going to go to the next plague. Okay, the second plague is the frogs, which is Ikent. You understand? The frog god. That's why many of our people today, if you notice in the Buddhists, they eat frogs. You see that frog with a with a big lip? That one right there. Okay, read them. Verse 16. The third plague. Come on. The book of Exodus, chapter 8, verse 16. Read. And the Lord said unto Moses, say unto Aaron, stretch out thy rod and smite the dust of the land. Go ahead. That it may become lice throughout all the land of Egypt. So the land, the now the Mosa is smiting the Egyptians with lice. You understand? They are they are clean god, Beelzebub. That's what is called Beelzebub. Lies. The god of uncleanness. Go ahead. And they did so. For Aaron stretched stretch out his hand with his rod and smote the dust of the earth, and it became lice in men Rain. and in beasts. All the dust of the land became lice throughout all the land of Egyp Come on. And the magicians did so with their tongues. Meaning they, they, the the Sangomas of, of Egypt. They replicated what, what, what Moses and Aaron did. Okay, go ahead. To bring forth lice, but they could not. Oh, at this time, they couldn't do it. They couldn't do it at this time. But before then, the first, the, the first two plays, they could replicate the stuff. But here, right here, they couldn't do it. Go ahead. So there were lice upon man uh -huh. and upon beast. Really? Then the magician said unto Pharaoh, This is the finger of God. Come on. And the Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he hearkened not unto them. As the Lord had said. Wait. And the Lord said unto Moses, Rise up early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh. Lo, he cometh forth to the water and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Let my people go, Wait. that they may serve. Uh -huh. Else. Okay, Else. So that's it on that. So that right there, that's when the Lord smitten the Egyptian with lies. The God of uncleanness. Okay, read verse 21 now. The next plague. Okay, the fourth plague now. Come on. The book of Exodus chapter 8 is 1. Go ahead. Else, if thou wilt not let my people go, behold, I will send swarms of flies upon thee, Wait. and upon thy servants, and upon thy people, and into thy houses. And the houses of the Egyptians shall be full of swarms of flies, mm -hmm. and also the ground where, where on they, they are. Wait. And I will sever in that day the land of Goshen, in which my people dwell. Come on, in the whoa, 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 read that part again. The book of Exodus, chapter 8, verse 22. Come on. And I will sever in that day the land of Goshen. He says, I will sever in that day the land of Goshen. Remember that thing right there? When our forefather Joseph said, when Pharaoh asked you, what is your occupation? Tell him you are what? You are shepherds. That's why they were able to stay in the land of Goshen. So during the time of judgment, they were, they were not touched. 
You see that thing? Read on. In which my people go, come on, that no swarms of flies shall be uh -huh. to the end. Thou mayest know that I am the Lord in the midst of it. Read. In the midst of the earth. And I will put a division between my people and thy people. Tomorrow shall this sign be. The Lord has made a promise and he definitely fulfilled it. Go ahead. And the Lord did so, and there came a grievous storm of flies into the house of Pharaoh. Read. And into his servants' houses, and into all the land of Egypt. The land was corrupted by reason of the storm of flies. You see that thing? The Lord sent flies upon them, and they bit the people. Some of them died by these flies. The most I created special flies just for the Egyptians to destroy them and kill them. Okay, let's go to the next plague. Exodus 8, verse 21. The book of Exodus. No, 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 Exodus 9, I'm sorry. Exodus chapter 9, read verse 3. The book of Exodus chapter 9, verse 3. Go ahead. Behold, the hand of the Lord is upon the cat, is upon thy cat, really? which is in the field, upon the horses, upon the asses, upon the camels, upon the oxen, and upon the sheep. There shall be a very grievous parade. Go ahead. And the Lord shall sever between the cattle of Israel and the cattle of Egypt. Right. And there shall nothing die of all that is, that is the children of Israel. So now, what the Lord is doing right here, He is smiting the one, their oxen. Okay? He says they are also upon their asses because they were worshipping one, the cow god. That's why they eat the East Indians, they get it from here. This thing does say, no, they worship a cow, they get it from Egypt. Remember, these nations, they always copy from Egypt, but the main nation that is doing it on this earth is the so-called white man. But the other nations, they are also copying from him, and they are also also copying from what ancient kingdoms. That's what you are seeing here. The cow god have fall. Go ahead. Verse 5. And the Lord appointed his in time, saying, Tomorrow the Lord shall do this thing in the land. Really? And the Lord did that thing on the world, mm -hmm. and all the castle of Egypt died. Really? But of the cattle of the children of Israel God died not once. So the cattle of the Egyptians did drop dead, they died. But our cattle, they didn't. When you look at the cattle in Rwanda, you see them got that huge horns. You understand? What's the president of Rwanda? Mm. Paul Kagame. He loves them. Another one president of ours, okay, Sir Ramaphosa, he loves them. He paid a lot of money for them, okay? Those cattle with huge horns. He says, no, they are beautiful. They are right there, actually, on the, on the page. If you look at the, on the, on the, if you look at the, the, the fifth plate, the livestock murrain, that's what you see right there, okay? Go ahead. And Pharaoh said, and behold, there was not one of the cattle of the Israelites, of the Israelites did. Really? And the heart of Pharaoh was hard. Come on. And he did not let the people go. He didn't let the people go. Okay, the next plague. The sixth plague. Okay, come on. Verse 8. The book of Exodus chapter 9 is 8. Really? And the Lord said and the Lord said unto Moses, and unto Aaron, take to you handfuls of ashes of the furnace. Really? And let Moses sprinkle it toward the, the heaven. In the sight of Pharaoh, Rain. and it shall become small dust in all the land of Egypt, and shall be a boil breaking forth with blades upon men Rain. and upon beasts throughout all the land of Egypt. Mm -hmm. And they took ashes of the furnace and stood before Pharaoh, and Moses sprinkled it up, up toward heaven, and it became a boil breaking forth with blades upon men Rain. and upon beasts. And the magicians could not stand before Moses because of the boils. For the boil was upon the magicians and upon all the Egyptians. So now what's happening here is that the Lord is smitting the Egyptians with boils. Why? Because remember, the Egyptians believe that there's a God that is responsible for what health and beauty. That's what they believed. So the Lord said, okay, let's see if the so-called God that you worship is going to defend you from this. It did not. You understand? There's a documentary about what's happening in India where they are mining for there's this there's this mineral. They they use it for uh, for for makeup. When you look at that documentary, oh, you see our people what they went what they went through over there in India. You understand? Because there was a, there's our people are over there in India. 
They are mining this mineral. I forgot the name of the mineral now. I cannot think about it right now. But there's a mineral in India that our people are mining for what? It's all over the earth. The people, when you look at all these companies that cosmetic companies, they actually get that mineral from India. Okay? Our people are actually bringing their banks in India to mine that thing. You must look that documentary up. Okay, Brian? Then the Lord hardened the hearts of Pharaoh, and he hearkened not, and he hearkened not unto them, as the Lord had spoken unto Moses. Okay, and jump down to verse twenty-two. Let's go to the next page, the seventh page. Okay, the book of Exodus, chapter nine, verse twenty-two. Right. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch forth thy hand to a head, Read. that they may be hail in the land of Egypt. Read. Upon man and upon beast, uh -huh. and upon every herb in the field. Throughout the land of, God, of Egypt. Rain. And Moses stretched forth his rod toward heaven. And the Lord said, Thunder and hail. And the fire ran along upon the ground. Right. And the Lord rained hail upon the land of Egypt. Rain. So there was hail and fire mingled with the hail. So hail. there was hail mingled with fire. So the Lord, he, he destroyed the Egyptians with hail and fire. Right. What verse you in? Verse 24, sir. Read again. The book of Exodus, chapter 9, verse 24. Come on. So there was hell and fire mingled with the hell, very grievous, such as, the, such as there was none like it in all the land of Egypt since it became a nation. Right. And the hell spoke throughout all the land of Egypt, all that was in the field, right. both man and beast. Uh -huh. And the hell spoke every herb in the field. And bring every tree of the field. So now the Lord used the hail and the fire mingled together to destroy the Egyptians. You understand? To destroy their vegetation, their crops, and all that, because they believe that there's a sky god that's gonna protect them. That sky god did not protect them. Go ahead. Only in the land of Goshen, there where the children of Israel were, was there no hail. You see that thing? That's the prophecy that that's that's what happened in Genesis 46. Genesis 47 with our forefather Joseph. Okay, let's go to the next plague. Okay, the eighth plague. Exodus 10 verse 12. The book of Exodus chapter 10 verse 12. Come on. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thy land over the land of Egypt for the locusts, that they may come upon the land of Egypt Rain. and eat every herb of the land, uh -huh. even all that the hail hath left. Rain. And Moses stretched forth his rod over the land of Egypt. And the Lord brought the east wind upon the land all that day and all that night. Rain. And when it was morning, the east wind brought the locusts. Come on. And the locusts went up over all the land of Egypt and rested in all the coasts of Egypt. Uh -huh. Very grievous were they. Rain. Before them, there were no such locusts as they. Go ahead. Neither after them shall be such. Come on. For they covered the face of the whole earth. So that the land was darkened, and they did eat every herb of the land, and all the fruit of the trees which the hail had left, and there remained not even, and there remained not any green thing in the trees or in the herbs of the field through all the land of Egypt. You remember, there was a time in, in, in South Africa when there was there were there were there were locusts that was eating up the crops. Anybody remember that in Cape Town? They were all over the place, Western Cape, just eating up the crops. You understand? That that was a glimpse of what happened in Egypt. It was on the news. The farmers was complaining that we are losing our our our, our life too. We cannot sell, we cannot trade. It affected many companies that were supplying what? Fruits and veggies. Okay? So imagine during this time, because Egypt was a superpower, what happened to them? There was locals that were eating up everything that was left by the hay. So guess what? That right there, that's fair. Guess what? When you read Deuteronomy 28 in the curses, right? It says the locusts will come, they will eat up what? All the the what the crops of your field. Guess what? When we read it to Trump 28 with the curses, the locusts is represent who? The nations doing that to us. Okay? Understand that. Okay, go ahead. Then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron in haste, and he said, I have sinned against the Lord your God uh -huh. and against you. Really? Now therefore forgive me, I pray thee, my sin only this once, 
and entreat the Lord your God that he may take away from me this death only. What verse you have? The 17th. Okay, oh please, let's go to the next plague. Okay, Exodus 10 verse 21. The book of Exodus chapter 10 verse 21. Great. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thy hand toward heaven, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt. Great. Even darkness which may be fell. Even darkness that may be fell. Meaning what? The Lord wanted to make sure that they were going to experience the darkness. Now we are in spiritual Egypt. Guess what's going on? Our people, they are in what? They are in darkness that they can feel it. Yeah, they can feel it. Our people know something's wrong, but they don't know how to explain it. They know something's wrong. They are joining political parties. They think Malema will save them. I remember when we were teaching in Sheffield on the 21st, one sister said Malema is their savior. That's what she said. She said Malema is their savior. That's what she said. You can't make this stuff up. But that's what our people believe. Some people believe Kankalans is their savior, but he's not. And now that he went into jail, he came out, guess what? Many people are gonna what? They're gonna now he's gonna have a lot, a lot of followers now. Yeah. Because they said he believes this so he believes this so much that he's willing to go to jail for it. Guess what? The people are going to follow him. If there are people they love him, okay. Now, read them. Keep, keep going. And Moses stretched forth his hand to him. Read. And there was a thick darkness in uh -huh. all the land of Egypt. Three days. Three days. Go ahead. Three days of darkness. Read. They saw not one another. Uh -huh. Neither rose any from his place for three days. Read. But all the children of Israel had light in their bed. Now, this is a heavy verse right here. These two verses right here, these are heavy verses. But you know what? Because we press for time, I'm not going to spend time there. Go ahead. And Pharaoh called unto Moses and said, Go ye, serve the Lord, only that your flocks and your herds be stayed. Right. That, your, that your little ones also go with you. Come on. And Moses said, Thou must give us also sacrifices and burnt offerings, that we may sacrifice unto the Lord our God. Uh -huh. So the Lord Moses did it first and said, Listen. We need to go and sacrifice unto our God. Because the Mosai was what? The Mosai is a genius. He's using fair, he's having his mind, you understand? But he's also, he's having his mind, he's saying, you are going to resist, and I'm going to bring more plagues upon you. Could you imagine that? Imagine you getting, now think about it, think about it, think about it in terms of us. You are in the truth, you understand? The Lord is using leadership to give you counsel, you don't apply it. The Lord hardens your heart. You get plagued. The Lord judges you. You keep going back. You get cancer. The same thing. You do the same thing over and over again. Who's doing that? The Lord is hardening your heart. No, maybe the most high is changing your heart. Think about that thing. Let that sink in. Okay, the, the next thing, the last thing. Exodus 12 verse 29. Read that. Well, Exodus chapter 12 verse 29. Go ahead. And it shall come to pass. That at midnight the Lord smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, uh -huh. from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sat on his throne, Wait. up to the firstborn of the captain, come on, and was in the dungeon, and all the firstborn of cattle. Wait. And Pharaoh rose up in the night, he and all his servants, and all the Egyptians, and there was a great cry in Egypt, for there was not a house where there was not a dead. Now that's heavy, baby. Imagine the whole of South Africa should cry. Every parent having lost their firstborn. You wake up, your firstborn is dead. Because the firstborn is not talking about just your kids. It's also talking about your beast, right? But it's also talking about if you're the firstborn in your family. You can be 80 years old, but you're still the firstborn. You're not going to wake up. There was a great cry in Egypt. Imagine that thing. That's every right thing. Go ahead. Come on. Okay. Read verse 31 now. The book of Exodus chapter 12 verse 31. Go ahead. And he called for Moses and Aaron by night and said, Rise up and get you forth from among my people, both ye and the children of Israel, and go, serve the Lord as ye have said. Read. And take, also take your flocks and your herds, 
as he has said, Pray with God. And bless me also. He said, Bless me also. Don't forget to bless me also. Go ahead. And the Egyptians were urgent upon the people. They were what? Were urgent upon the, upon the people. They couldn't wait to get us out of Egypt. Go ahead. That they might send them out of the land in haste. In what? In haste. In haste. We, don't, we left haste. Come on. For they said, We be all dead men. Because we all going to die if we keep, we keep these people here. Go ahead. And the people took their dough before it. It was left. Read that part again. The book of Exodus chapter 12 verse 34. Read. And the people took their dough before it was left. It says the people took their dough before it was left. That's why we're having the feast of a day. Because we left before the what? Because the dough could rise. You understand? So that happened physically. That's also, that's also going to happen in a spiritual sense. You understand? Because we must be unleavened. Okay, go ahead. They are needing toes be bound up in their clothes upon their shoulders. Okay, read. And the children of Israel did according to the word of Moses. And they borrowed of the Egyptians jewels of silver and jewels of gold and red. Imagine, here we are, we are leaving. The Lord is judging the Egyptians and jacking them up. The Lord says, take what they've got. Rob them. So when we left Egypt, we had money, we had wealth, we had riches when we left Egypt. You ever seen that movie Exodus with, uh, what's that hero right? Christian Bale. You see how they came out of Egypt? They look like ragamuffins. You can't make it up. But that's not actually, that's not biblical. Because when we left Egypt, we were dressed like the Egyptians. <laughs> okay, go ahead. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, when? so that they lent unto them such things as they required. When? And they spoiled the Egyptians. We spoiled the Egyptians. Go ahead. And the children of Israel journeyed from Ramesses to Succoth. Read on. About 600,000 on foot that were men. Go ahead. Beside children. Read. And a mixed multitude went up also with them. Read. And flocks and herds. Even very much cattle. You see that? So when we left, we had stuff. We was not poor. We was rich when we left Egypt. But when you see these movies that you see on TV, it doesn't line up with the scripts. You understand? That's why the Bible is the only truth about this earth. Understand that? Okay? Okay, go ahead. And they baked 11 cakes of the dough which they put forth out of, the, out of Egypt. They did what? And they baked and never cakes. We baked, we baked and never cakes, right? Of the dough which they brought forth out of Egypt. For it was not leavened, because they were thrust out of Egypt and could not tell it. Neither had they prepared for themselves any bill. You see that thing? So we had unleavened bread when we left. Now watch this. Give me First Corinthians 5 and 7. Let me just touch on it. First Corinthians 5 and 7. Okay, but you know, we have a seven day feast, so today we have, I mean, it's the day when we got delivered, so we must have this class. Okay, so I wanted to go over certain things, but I will not. Okay, next time I will also read it. First book of Corinthians, the Bible said, Come on, purge out therefore the whole level. It says, Purge out therefore the whole level, read that ye may be a new lump, that you may be a new lump in Christ. Come on, as ye are unleavened, as ye are what. As, he are as you are unleavened. Okay, go ahead. For even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. You see that thing? So now, the reason why we left in haste and the bread was unleavened, that's why now, spiritually, we must be unleavened. We must get rid of the leaven. You understand? And we, we came out of Egypt before the dough could rise. You understand? That's why we left with what? Unleavened bread. So now, the Lord, when he's going to deliver us, guess what's going to happen? We are going to get delivered before we are corrupted. Think about that thing. Before we are unleavened. Before we are leavened. Because right now, the Lord is waking us up. We are, we are new creatures in Christ now. You understand? We get rid of the leaven. Okay? So we are preparing for the second coming of the Messiah. So before we could be corrupted, because the Lord will pick us up on that day. That's why when Christ left, he also left before he could be corrupted. 
Because he had stayed longer, he also was going to be corrupted. Understand that. So the most high God is going to eat what? He has got mercy on us. We are on verse 8. Verse 8. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Let us keep the feast. Come on. Not with all heaven. Not with all heaven. Really? Neither with the heaven of malice and wickedness. Uh -huh. But with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. You see that thing? But with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Okay. Now watch this. Give me First Corinthians 15. Read verse 23. This book of Corinthians, chapter 15, verse 23. Because Exodus is deliverance from oppression, right? Watch this. Come on. First book of Corinthians, chapter 15, verse 23. Come on. But every man in his own order, mm -hmm. Christ the first fruits after, afterward, that they that are Christ at his coming. So Christ was the first fruits, okay? It says, afterward, they that are Christ at his coming. So who's going to come up to us? That's us. He paved the way for us. He showed how we must walk. Now we're coming after him. We must walk after his footsteps. If you read 1 Peter 2.21. Right? Then cometh the end. Then cometh the end. Meaning what? The destruction, the deliverance. Read. When he shall have delivered up the kingdom of God, even the Father. The kingdom to God. Come on. First book of Corinthians chapter 15, verse 24. Right. Then cometh the end, uh -huh. where he shall deliver up the kingdom to God, right. even the Father. Come on. Where he shall have put down all who and all authority and power. Meaning what? He's going to destroy these nations. Just like he destroyed the Egyptians, he's going to destroy the nations today in these last days. Right? For he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. You see that thing? That's what, that's what the Lord intends. The most High God is going to use His Son to come and deliver us out of slavery. Likewise, when we were delivered, when we were delivered out of Egypt, we are going to be delivered again in spiritual Egypt. Okay, let's get to the Passover main Exodus twelve verse one. The book of Exodus twelve verse one. Come on. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. Come on. It shall be the first month of the year to you. The first month of the year. That's where we are. Great. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. So you must get the lamb according to the number of the people in your house. Go ahead. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor left to let unto his house take it, according to the number of the souls. Every man, according to his eating, shall make your count for the land. You see that thing? He says, if the land is too, the land is too legal, he says, go to your name and get more. Go ahead. Your land shall be without bread. Really? A male of the first year. That's, that's also symbolic of Christ. Really? He shall take it out from the sheep uh -huh. or from the goat. So this is the man, a sheep or a goat, not chicken. Not cucumber, okay, not a beggar, right? And he shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month. Rain. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it to the evening. Rain. And he shall take up the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door posts Rain. in the houses. Come on. And they shall eat it. Rain. And they shall eat the flesh in that night. They shall do what? And they shall eat the flesh in that night. This night. Okay, go ahead. Roast with fire. Do what? Roast with fire. You must fry it. Go ahead. And a little bread. And a little bread. Bread without yeast, bread. And with bitter herbs. Bitter herbs, okay, goes into your what? Your meat, your coriander. Go ahead. They shall eat it. Go ahead, come on. It's not of it raw. Go ahead. No solid at all with water. Meaning don't cook it with water, bread. But roast with fire. But roast with fire, bread. Is here with his legs. And with the pertinence thereof. Uh huh, come on. And ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning. Come on. And that which remained of, of it until the morning, ye shall burn with fire. So, we must finish the lamb. Yeah. All the meat must be done. Read the verse again, verse 10. The book of Exodus, chapter 12, verse 10. Right. And, and ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning. 
Pray. And that which remained of it until the morning, he shall burn by. So we're not going to take his captives of land when the sun comes up. Understand? It must be finished. Right? And thus shall you eat it uh -huh. with your Lord's burden, Pray. your shoes on your feet, uh -huh. and your staff in your hand. Come on. And you shall eat it in haste. In what? You shall eat it in haste. Oh, right, and come on. It is the Lord's puzzle. It is the Lord's puzzle. It doesn't mean we must not enjoy ourselves. <laughs> We must enjoy ourselves. Don't get it twisted. Go ahead. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, uh -huh. and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, Great. both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. All praises to the Lord. Go ahead. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. Great. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. I will do what? I will pass over you. So guess what? So when, when the, the death angel came, when they saw the blood on the, on the two side poles, guess what? The angel passed over the, our houses. Watch this. All this. Give me Revelation 12 real quick. Let's then. Revelation 12. When you see the blood of the lamb or the goat on the, on the side post on the door, the, and the death angel passed over. Watch this. Revelation 12. Okay. Read verse 11. The book of, the book of Revelation, chapter, 11, chapter 12, verse 11. Read. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. They did what? And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. The same way we overcame by the blood of the Lamb back then in Egypt, we're going to overcome by the blood of the Lamb. Who's the Lamb now? Jesus the Christ, the black Messiah. Go ahead. And by the word of their testament. Uh -huh. And they loved not their lives unto the dead. You see that thing, meaning what? You decided, I want, I'm coming in here, I want to bury the old man. The old man must be buried. Don't hang on to that nigger. Get rid of the old man. You must be a new lump. Understand that thing. Okay? Let's go back. Exodus 12. Go back to where it was read. The book of Exodus to the 12. Verse 12. Read. No, no, no. Not verse 12, verse 13. Come on. The book of Exodus, chapter 12, verse 13. Read. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. Come on. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. I will do what? I will pass over you. The Lord you. says he will pass over our houses. The same we overcame by the blood, we also now are going to overcome by the blood of the land. Read on. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you. Come on. When I smite the land of Egypt. When I smite the land of Egypt. The same way he smitten the land of Egypt back then, he's going to smite the land of spiritual Egypt today. Read on. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial. Come on. And he shall keep it a feast. He shall what? And he shall keep it a feast. Read. To the Lord. Uh -huh. Out of generation. He shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. Forever. We must keep this feast. In the land of our captivity. Even when the Lord returns, we're still going to keep the Passover. Understand that. Go ahead. Seven days shall you eat and live bread. Because guess what? We all going to go back to be vegans. But on the Passover, we're going to have lamb or goat. Read. Even the first day, you shall put away leaven out of your house. Okay, I hope you brothers and sisters did that. There's no leaven in your house. Okay? Even in your car. Okay, go ahead. For whosoever eats a leaven, leaven bread from the first day until the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. You see that? The Lord says, I'm going to judge you. I'm going to destroy you. Okay? So no leaven in your house. But guess what? That leaven, you physically get rid of the leaven. Spiritually, you must get rid of the leaven. It's symbolic. You must get rid of the leaven spiritually. You cannot say, okay, I'm, 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 I'm observing the feast of unleavened bread, but you hate your brother. Eh? What level are you getting rid of? But you hate your sister. You can't stand your brother's guts, but you are observing the feast of unleavened bread. That's some evil stuff. You see this basic stuff? Love your brother as yourself. Don't lie to your neighbor. Don't hate your brother. You understand? Don't cheat. Don't steal. Those are the hardest things for Israel to do, by the way. You see, the feast days, we keep them. Because we, guess what? It's like we're in the world. Because the mindset of the, the, mind, the mind of the black man, you just want to be entertained. 
Remember, a lot of you during this time, you be the club doing what you do. But today, you observe the feast of unleavened bread, you fall in sleep. <laughs> you see that thing? We have to examine ourselves. Understand that. Read it again. The book of Exodus, chapter 12, verse 15. Read. Seven days shall you eat the little bread. Come on. Even the first day you shall put away heaven out of your house. Read. For whosoever eats a little bread from the first day until the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. Read. And in the first day there shall be a holy convocation. That's what you are seeing now. Come on. And in the seventh day there shall be a holy convocation. The last day shall be a holy convocation. Come on. No manner of work shall be done to the dead. Read. Save that which every man must eat, that only may be done with you. Read. And he shall observe the feast of unleavened bread. Uh -huh. For in this same day have I brought your armies out of the land of Egypt. Therefore shall you observe this day in your generations by an ordinance forever. You see that day forever. Go ahead. In the first month. On the 14th day of the month. You see, you notice the most I keep repeating himself over and over. Why is he doing that? Because Israel is rebellious. Israel is rebellious. The most I has to keep repeating things over and over because guess what? We hate the Lord. Yeah. Because you know when you go and pray, you don't keep it real with the most I. You just fake it the fuck. The Lord is not going to hear nothing you say. You understand? Because you can fool us, but when you appear before the Lord in your private space, you still you still pierce the most high. Nothing gonna change because the Lord said, okay, you don't want to actually come correct. You don't want to keep it real. You sure go to stuff. Keep it a hundred with the most high. You'll be able to keep it with your brother. You understand? But if you don't keep it real with yourself, you waste the time in this truth. If you cannot sit down and examine yourself and say, this is me, let me begin to deal with my issues, guess what? Nothing's going to change. It doesn't matter how many times you pray. It doesn't matter how many times you go to camp, how many, how many fridges you can put on. If you don't examine yourself and get rid of the leaven, it's a waste of time. It doesn't matter. You can fast for 40 days if you want. It's not going to change nothing. The Bible is a book of change. If you don't change something wrong, you do. If you are still the same brother that you were three years ago, two years ago, five years ago, in the truth, something wrong. It's not supposed to be like that. That means you are not examining yourself. You just go through the motions. You understand? Okay, go ahead. You shall eat and live bread. Until the one and twentieth day of the month at Eve. You see that thing at Eve. Go ahead. Seven days shall there be no leaven found in your house. Mm. For whosoever eats at that which is leaven, really? even that soul shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel. Mm. Go ahead. Whether he be a stranger or born in the land. Whether he be a stranger, meaning what? He is a strange for he is a strange for his land. Maybe he wants it poor. His brother is helping him, so he's a stranger or born in the land. When he was born in that land, you understand Jerusalem as an example, or born in the land that was allotted to him. If you read to 32 is 8. Okay, so I'm going to end the last right here. Open to the Lord, let's break bread in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Okay, let's break bread. So, sisters, I believe you need to uh, gather the, 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 the stuff together. Okay. Let's get bread, let's get bread and wine, okay? And honor our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I wanted to go over a couple of things, but I couldn't. Because I'm pressed for time. We want to eat the bread, we want to eat the meat. We want to have the unleavened bread. We want to have the bitter, the bitter herbs, okay? So all praises to the most high. All praises to the Lord. All praises to the most high. Let's give the most high. Oh, please, to the Lord. oh, please, to the Lord. So, we've got new spirits in the, in the house. Oh, please, brothers. How was the travels? Ah, oh, please, oh, please. Okay, the brothers, were, the brothers was welcoming. Sorry? The brothers was welcoming. Yeah. 
All praises to the Father. All praises. All praises to the Lord. All praises to the Lord. I hope you brothers can see we have a lot of work to do. Okay? We have a lot of work to do. Oh yes, that's true. All praises to the Father. All praises. Uh, get that, get that look. Get that look now. Okay? We definitely do have a lot of work to do. Okay. Uh, Luke chapter 9, verse 58. Luke chapter 9, verse 58. Go ahead. And Jesus said unto him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has not where to lay his head. Because he was traveling, but he had a place to stay, you know. And he said unto another, Follow me. But he said, Lord, Suffer me first to go and bury my father. You see excuses? This is excuse number one. Go ahead. Jesus said unto him, Let the dead bury their dead. That's cool right there. Christ in place and let the dead bury their dead. You follow me. Go ahead. But go thou and preach the kingdom of God. But go out there to the streets and prophesy. That's what he's saying. Read. And another also said, Lord, I will follow thee. Uh -huh. But let me first go bring the burial. Which are at my house, which are at home at my house. You see that? So his family members, that was his top people. Because he says, let me go and bid them farewell. Then I'll follow you. Go ahead. And Jesus said unto him, No man having put his hand to the plough and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. You see that thing? So when you make a decision to come into this truth, you must understand there's no way back. There's no I quit. There's no I don't feel like it anymore. There's no such thing. The minute you, you, you do that, that means now everything that you did, the Lord will forget it. The most I will not remember anything you've done. Okay? Now, chapter 10, verse 1. Watch this. This is what's going to happen going forward. It will be implemented, but in the not near future, in the Far future, because we, we brothers must get their minds right. Read verse one now. We tell them more. The book of Luke to the ten verse one. Come on. After these things, the Lord appointed other seventy also, ready, and sent them two and two before His face into every city and place, uh -huh. whither Himself would come. You see that thing? He sent them two by two, a leader and the brother that he, the, a leader and the brother that explains. So in order for you to be the two of you, listen, you have to be well versed in the scriptures, number one. Two, you also, you can't be scared. You cannot be afraid. So the quickest way to get rid of your fear, you must be a careful. You must read. You must hold the Bible and read. Hold camp. Hold up camp side so that fear can be gotten rid of. You hit the ground running. Okay? As soon as you arrive, Give him the Bible. Let's see what type of spirit he is. Let's see how he reads. Let's see how he, be, he performs under pressure. Because it's high pressure. Okay? When there's a multitude out there, there's high pressure. So, guess what? You must be able to want to get to the that field. Okay? That's Camp 101. Our Camp 101, you hit the streets. You become the armor bearer. We must get rid of that field. We have to get it. We, we must get rid of it. You understand that? Go ahead. Therefore said he unto them, Come on. Let's do again. The book of Luke chapter 10 verse 2. Come on. Therefore said he unto them, The harvest truly is great. The harvest truly is great. Go ahead. But the laborers are few. But the laborers are few. The harvest is great. The laborers are few. And a few is the one that the Lord is going to use to wake up the people. Keep reading. Watch this. Pray therefore the Lord of the harvest uh -huh. that he would set forth laborers into his harvest. You see that thing? The laborers. We, need, we must pray for laborers. That's what we must pray for on a daily basis for lab more laborers. Faithful, faithful brothers in this truth. Faithful and loyal and reliable brothers. That's what the Lord is looking for. The Lord don't care about the multitude of unprofitable sons. He only cares about. Give me that to first part of his three verse 18. Watch this. 
First Maccabees chapter 3, verse 18. Watch this. You know what? Yeah, read it. This book of Maccabees chapter 3, verse 18. Come on. Unto whom Judas answered, It is no hard matter for manner for many to be shut up in the hands of a few. He says, Many will be shut up in the hands of a few. Read. And with the God of heaven, it is all one. Meaning, it doesn't matter. With the most high, it's all the same. With the most high God, when it's a multitude or a few, the most high God, the battle is the same. Okay, go ahead. To deliver with a great multitude. To deliver with a great multitude, go ahead. Or a small company. Or, or a small company. With the Lord is all one. Okay, go ahead. For the victory of battle standeth not in the multitude of an host. The victory does not stand in the multitude of an host, come on. But strength cometh from heaven. But our strength comes from the most high God. You understand? So when the Lord says, I'm going to send you two by two, guess what? That's enough. It doesn't matter whether it's two or it's a hundred. The Lord says, you will surely deliver it. So the most high God doesn't look at them. Do you believe it enough to go out there and wake your people up? If that's true, the Lord will surely deliver them. That's why when I fought for the King David was going to war, every single time he went, he asked the Lord, he consulted. Should I pursue this truth? The Lord said, yeah, then he goes. The Lord says, no, then he says, okay, hold your peace. Don't go there. Don't go to war because you're not going to be successful. Likewise, there's certain places that we've been wanting to go and teach, but the most I just been blocking them because it's not the time yet. You know that, you know that, brothers, right? We've been wanting to go to certain places, but we cannot go there yet because it's not the time. But when the time is right, we should go out there and teach the gospel. I hope you brothers understand it. Okay? All praises to the most high God. Okay? So, I believe the sisters, would you check on the sisters? Okay? So, brothers, how are, how, how, how are the spirits over there? Thank you. Is it? Yeah. Is it difficult? All praises. All praises. So, okay. Yeah, we, 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 Come to war with us. Yeah. Okay? Come to war with us. Uh, what's your name, brother? Yes, Bongan. Bongan. Your son? Police. Police. For your son? Yes. Zaken. Yes. Okay. All praises to the Lord. All praises to the Most High. Okay, give me Jeremiah 5 14. Jeremiah chapter 5 verse 14. The only way to overcome, to deal with the spirits out there, the Most High God has given us a key ingredient on how to deal with. Watch this. Jeremiah chapter 5 verse 14. Read that. The book of Jeremiah chapter 5 verse 14. Come on. Wherefore thus said the Lord God of hosts, because he speak this word. Because he do what? Because he speak this word. Because he speak this word. Read. Behold, I will make thy words in thy mouth fire, uh -huh. and this people would, and it shall devour them. You see what the Lord is saying? When you go out there with God's laws, guess what? The people will listen. Those that don't listen, they will get cut. And they will consider what the scripture says. You understand? Either way, whether they, they hear or forbid, they are still going to hear it. It's still going to do something to their spirit. Okay? Understand that thing. So give me Isaiah 8 verse 20. The book of Isaiah chapter 8 verse 20. Come on. To the law and to the testament. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. You see that thing? We must speak according to this word, the word of God. That's how we speak. Okay? But before you can speak the word of God, give me that in 2nd Genesis 14, verse 18. This is what you brothers need to understand. But I need you brothers to start attending classes regularly. Okay? 
you have to attend. Because when you go out there, you're not representing yourself. The most high God will make you part of the body. But when you go out there, you must speak. We all must speak the same thing. So you must attend class regularly. If you have any issues with connectivity and so forth, rather dial in. That's bad. If there's issues in your area, in terms of data and all that, you can dial into the class and listen in and take notes. Okay? Read that. Second Exodus 14 verse 13. Read that. Second book of Exodus chapter 14 verse 13. Come on. Now therefore set thy house in order. That's the first thing. You must set your house in order. That is the first thing that the black man must do. You cannot go out there to teach anybody if your house is not in order. You understand? So you're not ready to teach here because you must set your house in order. That's why you need to attend class. You're going to start to attend the private classes that we have to build the men up. Because you must get built up. So when you go out there, you win. You understand? Okay, right? And to prove that you. Then the Lord says, then you can go out there and to prove your people. Because you don't want to look like a hypocrite. You understand? You don't want to look like a hypocrite. Okay? Read that again. Second book of Exodus chapter 14, verse 13. Come on. Now therefore set thy house in order and to prove that he pray, come but such of them as will trouble, and now renounce corruption. Once your house is in order, then you can go out there and teach the people the laws of God. But as long as you're still alive, you still masturbate, you still watch porn, you're not ready to go out there. You're not ready. Because remember, our people that had enough with these pastors and all that. So when we go out there, we must walk and breathe this book. We must do what it says. No excuses. Okay? Well, let go from the mortal thoughts. The mortal thoughts is what? Sin. Read on. Cast away the burdens of man. The burdens of man is the sins that you still carry. The sins that you still miss. The sins that you still bear your with. You understand? Second Exodus, hold this. Second Exodus chapter 16, verse 67. The sins that you are still meddling with, because if you know that something is evil for you, but you meddle with it, obviously it will be as long as you are holding a smoke. You're going to get bit. Okay? With them. Second book of Exodus chapter 16, verse 67. Read. Behold, God himself is the judge. God himself is the judge. Read. Fear. Fear the Lord. Live off from your sins. Stop breaking God's commandments. And forget your iniquities. Forget your iniquities, meaning what? Repent. Read. To meddle no more with them forever. You see that part right there? Don't meddle anymore with your sins. If you know that big booty woman is your sickness, guess what? Don't meddle with no, don't meddle with them. You know that uh, certain times in the day or in the evening, when you're by yourself, you like to go to, to the internet because you are addicted to porn. Guess what? A wise man will do what? They'll pick up the phone and call a brother. To conversate with the brother to stay in the spirit until the devil leaves you. But if you by yourself, you don't call, you don't communicate, obviously the Satan is going to destroy you. You understand? Because that means you're meddling with it. You play with it. You understand? You know that these are these people, if I associate myself with them, they want to influence me negatively. It's not information, it's a fact. So you, the Lord said, you separate from them. You understand? You cannot be one foot in and one foot out. You will not be able to serve the Lord or be in the camp. Because we have to be 100% for us. You understand? Really? So shall God be before uh -huh. and deliver you from all trouble. Then the Lord will deliver you from all trouble. But if you keep meddling, the Lord will not deliver you from that trouble. Because you keep going back over and over on that sin. So that means you double minded. One minute you make a decision, I no longer want to do this. But guess what? You're still doing it. Then you say, Father, forgive me. No, this is not the Christian church. You don't keep going back over and over and sinning and breaking God's commandments. You understand? You go, you say, I'm doing it, then I'm doing it. When it gets hard, the Lord says, you've got brothers in the truth, call them up. So the devil can leave you. 
But if you don't do that, you meddle with it. The Lord says, I'm not, I'm not going to deliver you from this thing. Because you still meddle with the sin. You double-minded. You understand? Watch this. Give me that list of two. We come and make it. That's how you get rid of the leaven. Okay, we're still on topic, by the way. Don't get it twisted. Okay, so I have to read this 12. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 2, verse 12. Go ahead. Won't be to fearful hearts. Won't be to fearful hearts, because if you're double minded, that means you have fear. You don't believe that the Lord will deliver you if you stop meddling with it. Because that you want, you want to satisfy your lust. It feels good when you do it. Whatever it is that you're doing, Whatever vice you got, it feels good. But guess what? The most high God says you are fearful. That means you don't believe. Because one minute you believe the Lord will deliver you, the next minute you say, ah, but you know what? I'm going to be overcome. Right there, you don't believe it. Okay, go ahead. And faith hands. Faith hands, because you don't want to do it. That means you don't want to put effort. You don't want to, you don't want to get no gain. If you don't go through pain. No pain, no gain, right? Go ahead. And the sinner that goes two ways. That's what they do. Double minded. And the sinner that goes two ways. One minute is here, the next minute is there. He's double minded. He's not steadfast in his walk. You understand? Really? Go on to him that is faint hearted. You are faint hearted. You don't believe the Bible. Really? For he believeth not. It is what? For he believeth not. The Lord says you don't believe. Because you are faith at it. You go two way. Really? Therefore shall he not be defended. There shall what? Therefore shall he not be defended. The Lord says, I'm not going to defend you. It's the same thing we read in Second Exodus. He says, therefore the Lord will not deliver you. The Lord is not going to defend you from that sin. He's not going to deliver you from that sin. Because you are still meddling with it. That's the idol you worship. You still took it to the ATL friend, but you could flip this off. You still on YouTube watching Big Booty Woman 12, but you could flip this off. You still lie, but you could flip this off. You hate your brother, flip this off. You see that thing? You can't stop choking the chicken. You can't stop masturbating, but you could flip this off. Them days are over. You must get rid of that leather. That's why it's called the Feast of Unleavened Bread. You must get rid of it because if you don't, the Lord will destroy you. Because think about it. You would rather lose the kingdom because you was masturbating. Think about it. Could you imagine that? Why, how did you lose the kingdom? No, I was masturbating. You couldn't stop. You couldn't, you couldn't, you couldn't fight to get rid of it. But you fought to maintain evil in the world. You fought to be a nigger in the world. Why can't you fight now to be a god on this earth? You see, it requires responsibility for you to lead your nation. It takes responsibility and accountability. You must be accountable. Not just to yourself, but to your nation, because it's not about you. It's not about all of us. It's not about none of us. It's about the Lord. It's about his problem. You understand? So go back to Second Exodus, chapter 16, verse 67 again. Second book of Exodus, chapter 16, verse 67. Read. Behold, God himself is the judge. Because this part doesn't mean only God can judge. It means God is the one that makes the final judgment. Read. Fear. Fear him. Go ahead. Leave off from your sin. Leave off from your sin. Stop sinning. Go ahead. And forget your iniquity. Forget your iniquity. When you forget something, that means you don't remember it. That means what? You, 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 you have a memory of you masturbating. The Lord says you must forget it. Again, when you forget something, that means you don't do it. You don't remember. That's why it says forget your iniquities. Forget that you used to masturbate because you keep the commandments of the Lord. Thou shalt not. Right? To meddle no more with death forever. Really? So shall God give you forth and deliver you. From all trouble. From all trouble. What type of trouble? Is that you want this one? Watch this. This is the trouble that the Lord will deliver you from if you repent. Start, start with two. Read verse two. That's the one we want. You know what? Read verse one. 
Eu vou convidar que exerce esse tipo de uma pessoa. Right. Mas sabe, that's not sin. That's not sin. Have you been lying? Have you been masturbating? Have you, are you still dealing with big bully women? Because that's one of the biggest problems in Israel, by the way, with black men. You understand? You can't let go of the woman. You still worship the Gucci. That needs to stop. Okay? Go ahead. Do so no more. Do so no more. Stop worshiping the Gucci no more. Come on. But ask pardon for their former sins. But ask pardon, forgiveness for your former sins. Next verse. Go ahead. Flee from sin. Do what? Flee from sin. Did not walk. Flee from sin. Don't walk away from it. Flee from sin. The Lord says, run. Flee. Meaning run from it. Go ahead. As from the face of a serpent. As if you are reading from a poisonous snake. That's what the Lord is saying right there. That's how you don't meddle no more. You run. The Lord says, flee from sin. Okay? Go ahead. For if thou comest to get, if you meddle with it, what's going to happen? It will bite. It will what? It will bite. It's going to kill you. Read. The teeth thereof are as the teeth of a lion. Uh -huh. Slay the souls of men. You see that thing? Slay the souls of men because it's about your soul. Your soul is on the line. Read on. All iniquity is as a two edged sword. All iniquity is as a two edged sword. Because sin, it, can't, it destroys you. But not only that, it destroys your brother who's suffering from that. Because a lot of the times you think you repenting from something is about just you. No, it's not. It's about your brother. Because you're going to help him to overcome when it comes to the problem. You understand? Go ahead. The wounds thereof cannot be healed. Right? To terrify and to rob will, will waste riches. That's the house of proud men shall be made desolate. Because pride comes from what? When you depart from God's words. So don't meddle with your, with your sins. Meaning what? Get rid of the land. Second Ezra 16. Read verse 76 now. Watch this. Second book of Ezra chapter 16, verse 76. Read. And the guide of them who keep my commandments and precepts said to Lord God, Let not your sins. Way down, right? Let not your iniquities lift up themselves. So don't let sin rule over you. That's what it's saying, right? Woe we'll be unto them that are bound with their sin. Because when you measure, that means you are one with yourself. It's like you keep repeating the same thing over and over. You always find yourself in the same sin. That means you doing the, you doing evil and. You, you keep doing the same thing over and over, it's hoping for a different result. You're not expecting it, you're hoping for it. It's not going to change nothing. That's why change must come, must take place. Go ahead. And cover with their iniquities. Right? Like as a field is covered with their bushes. Okay, hold on. One second, go ahead. Like as a field is covered over with the bush, right. and the path thereof covered with thorns, right. that no man may travel through. Meaning nobody can get to you. It doesn't matter how many precepts you can read for you, how many counsels you can receive. If you are bound with that sin, that sin will destroy you. Go ahead. It is left undressed. It is left undressed. Meaning what? You don't deal with it, right? And is cast into the fire to be consumed the way. You're going to be cast into that fire, the lake of fire. Then you're going to be cast into that lake of fire if you don't repent. The second death. Okay, let's bring bread. All right. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Okay. You know, the sisters really did a good job. Let's give the sister a hand. Oh, the sisters did a good job. Beautiful. Look at the lion right there. All praises to the Most High. That's beautiful right there. All praises to the Lord. All praises to the Most High. Ah, the sister did a good job. All praises. All praises to the Most High. All praises to the Lord. Hey, this is good, man. This place right here. All praises, man. 
Could you imagine we were on the run on this day? That's a heavy thing. That is a heavy thing. Let's break bread. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he will give us betrayed to bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the new testament in my blood. This do ye, as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. As often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death to the cup. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord, and with it shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.